Well, hello there. It's David Duffett here, uh, the worldwide community advocate for Signal Wire, and I've snuck into the uh, CCW studio uh, with my friend and colleague Kevin Garabedian to uh, talk about a little sample app that he's put together. But before we get to that, Kevin, how are you doing today? Great, David. How are you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Thanks. Very pleased to be here with you and uh, spend some time with you talking about this application. Before before we get onto the sample application, we do intend this to be kind of uh, the beginning of a series where we look at a few different sample applications. But before we get to that, Kevin, just uh, run us through how you came to be a signal wire man and, and uh, give, give us a little bit of background uh, to you, please. Sure. Uh, well, I've been programming since the mid 90s. Uh, big tech enthusiast, been in a bunch of different industries. Uh, jumped to telecom about 12 years ago and I uh, met these guys online. I entered a contest and started rolling from there. And, you know, I ended up landing an awesome job, kind of a dream job. And I really love uh, making codes and samples and helping people out. Great, great stuff. So when you say you met the guys online, was this uh, in the free switch community? It was actually, yes, I was part of the free switch community for a long time too, just communicating back and forth. But they put out a April Fool's gag uh, last year right? and I entered the contest. It was kind of like a, a hide and seek, like search for clues type of a mystery uh, right. using, using Morse code, which was kind of fun. But, you know, I was sitting at a pub after work and cracked it in like 17 minutes. <laughs> and, then, uh, uh, and then it went from there. And then I got some messages, yeah. and then I was invited to come up to ClueCon, so I checked that out and uh, met all the guys, and it seemed like it was a good fit. So yeah, works. great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the special things about Signal Wire is is somehow the, the Signal Wire uh, management team have kind of reeled people in from the community to come and uh, do the stuff here, and uh, it's it's great because everybody wants to be here, and we're all headed in the same direction and uh, excited about what the future holds. Yeah, the communications future is very, very bright. There's going to be a lot of very cool things coming out. I'm excited to see and be part of all of it. So. Yeah, it sure is. And what I tend to find in talking to people that have been in software for a good while before they got to telecoms is that somehow telecoms is a bit more magical than other areas of software development. And, and for my part, I, I think that part of that is because it's so easy to connect to the real world. You know, you do some do some programming and all of a sudden you can pick up a phone or hear a message or get 10 phones to ring or, or whatever it might be. It just seems a little bit more connected to real life. It is. It's, there's a little bit of magic to it. It's kind of cool seeing someone's eyes light up the first time when you get to share some of the technology. You're going to a room, like you said, and make 100 or 200 or 500 phones ring at the same time or, you know, play Rick Ashley or whatever you're going to do on it, just have some fun. But um, it's definitely cool. Cool stuff. Okay, now we're here today to talk about um, an application. Um, uh, and, and as I said, we want to do a series of these. But the first one we're looking at is an SMS notification application. So a, a programmatic way of sending out SMSs. Can you um, give us an introduction to the application, please, Kevin? Sure. Uh, so basically, I, we were, want to get some turnkey solutions out to the community so they can kind of see how things are put together, show it, how easy it is to adopt and actually use some of these uh, tools, this toolbox that we offer for everybody. Uh, we have two different APIs. We have a LAML API and a Relay API. Um, I outlined, I made the application in both. I made it easy to deploy for everyone to actually get a chance to see and feel both of them. Um, it's set up right now. We have some .NET Core C Sharp React demos. I'm going to be pumping them out in a couple different languages as we go out too, so you can experiment in your favorite flavor. Uh, but these are set up also so they can be easily dropped into a Docker container and deployed in a droplet, fly.io, uh, or Heroku, or whatever your favorite cloud platform is, or even locally on your own environment. Um, but you know, with all the stuff going on in the world right now, an alert service app demo seemed like a great idea to get the messages out to people and um, you know, just help connect and make life easier. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, of course, the alert services, we're used to thinking about them being for informing people of stuff that's going on. Um, but right now, they're getting used in bulk to inform people about the stuff that's not going on, aren't they? The, the cancellation exactly. of uh, meetings. But, of course, they're, they're still useful. Um, in fact, they're made arguably even more useful at the moment for getting lots of information out to people quickly, lots of notifications. 
um, not only in bulk, but of course, series of individual ones for reminders for dentists, doctors, that kind of right. stuff. Yeah, this, this application, this uh, demo kit can actually be used for a lot of different uh, purposes. You know, you could use it for doctor's offices, dental offices, use for court reminders, you can use whatever you like. Um, you could do, it'll automatically take the replies and send them in so you can download the results and feed them into whatever system you want. Right now, the data is pretty raw. We left it in, your, in the community's hands to decide how they want to process their information, what kind of data structures they want. So right now, it's, it's just pretty pretty basic dump. But it'll give them the, the idea of how everything will work and how everything will flow. And of course, we'll always throw some support at it. If there's any community questions, we'll help and guide where necessary. Great stuff. So, so just to um, recap where we're up to, you've actually created example code for an mm -hmm. SMS alert or notification system in both uh, LAML or LAML, I should say, and Relay, both using SignalWire Cloud. And, and which languages did you say you'd use, Kevin? Uh, for this, for the to start with everyone in the community, I started with C Sharp, and it has a React front end, right. uh, .NET Core. So it's, it's pretty versatile, pretty pretty popular. You know, we'll drop it out in Node and. Uh, you know PHP and a couple other languages as we go. Or if the community has one specific they want to see, then we we can reproduce the demo in there too. Um, but it's also running in Docker, so you know you can take this and if you have a little knowledge, you can drop it in, and you don't have to worry about um, you know getting too involved. You change a couple environment files and you're you're off to the, the races, so to speak. Okay, great. Now I, I believe you're going to go into uh, more detail of the kind of mechanics of the code. Uh, in the written piece that goes with this uh, package. Um, but in terms of using LAML and Relay, both of these are APIs to use SignalWire Cloud. In LAML, the L means legacy, and so it makes us compatible with legacy platforms, so people that are using other um, older platforms and using standard HTTP calls can go ahead and do that. But our newer API, the one that we prefer, um, it's called Relay. I wonder if you can explain the difference between the two, Kevin. Sure. Uh, LAML uses REST-based uh, APIs. So there's a small delay between a request and you have to literally pull or have a webhook to get the responses back. So you're going to have anywhere from you know half a second to three seconds between results. And it's a lot more taxing. The Relay API has a persistent connection, so it's using WebSockets. So you're always connected to our server, and can, data can flow back and forth in real time. So here's where this is important. So when you're setting up this demo using a REST API, you have to have an exposed web server to get the request and to send the request. So you have to use tools like NGROC or make it publicly accessible. Not a big deal, a little bit more setup. But with Relay, you can have a drop right behind a firewall, and the persistent connection will persist. You don't have to worry about poking holes. It's much easier to set up, and you get a lot of added benefits from that real-time data going back and forth. And you can connect to any event you want. So if you, you know, it's all subscription-based, and it's, it just makes makes life a lot easier for debugging and for calls. And it also handles when you get into more advanced stuff like the phone calls. It actually will handle some of the load balancing and, and stuff for you, which makes life a little bit easier. Yeah, and on top of all those advantages, it sounds from what you're saying as if the Relay API is really the beginning of the story going towards serverless implementations because, you know, you'll be able to move more and more of what you're doing onto our server uh, and not have your own uh, servers doing things as well. Maybe not right now, but it, it, it sounds like it's the beginning of that story. Oh, no, it absolutely is. This is this is the beginning of dabble into serverless, and I think the future is going in that direction. And We're going to see a lot of neat stuff uh, coming from us uh, in regards to that technology. Great. Okay. So people have got this code that they can pick up and use. Um, you've uh, done a great job there, Kevin, of explaining the difference between the LAML API and the Relay API in terms of the advantages that Relay gives you. But before we close this little session, is there anything else you'd like to say specifically about the application itself? Um, have at it. I want everyone to have fun. If they have any questions, please reach out. You know, we're here to help. And you know, uh, in regards to everything else going on in the crazy world, be safe. You know, stay yeah, isolated. Very much so. Families, so. Just, just giving people information about where they can reach out. Can you tell people how to jump onto the, the community Slack channel, please, Kevin? Sure. If you want to go to uh, to signalwire.slack.com, 
I believe you can sign up right there and uh, reach out to us. You know, I'm Kevin Gary Beattie and I'm in the channel. So if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to, to hit me up. Um, well, and, you know, we'll help you out anywhere we can. Great stuff. I'm, I'm here to help as well. And uh, actually, as you can see in this recording, just look at the bottom of the pictures of Kevin and I and our email addresses are right there as well. So if you need anything, just get in touch. Well, for now, Kevin, thanks very much for making the time to come and uh, have a chat. Thank you for creating this code that we're giving away for free so people can uh, jump on and have a little go at using SignalWire. And uh, I look forward to the next time that you and I can talk about the, uh, a different application because uh, I, I know that in your mind there's, uh, there's like a series of applications that we can be helping people with. There's, there's lots of stuff that I would love to share with the community and get out there. And, you know, I think, I think some of this stuff is a lot easier than people think it is. I think that it might look overwhelming, but a lot of this stuff's really simple. And it's a lot of fun, too, when you play with it. So there'll be lots more coming in the pipeline. Awesome. We're just trying to encourage people to take their first step here and to jump right in. So you can expect to see Kevin and I back again with more applications later on. Bye for now.